Good morning. I'm Linda Barker. I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning for the Colorado Education Association. So I have a great job. I get to work with teachers across the state. Today we're physically in our building at the corner of Grand Street and it is a mid-century modern building. It's an incredible, as you can see, we're surrounded by great windows and in the center outside my office is a live tree that grows up. So it's a great facility that teachers pop in all across the state to really come to our building. Um, classroom teacher, Montana Teacher of the Year, and today it's my honor to read a book to you called A Wish for Wings That Work. So you can see from the cover that it's gonna be a fun book. So it's called An Opus Christmas Story. It was a good morning to fly, even if it had come late and slow, and so cold that a penguin feared that his nose might freeze off and drop like one of the icicles hanging over the porch. Fly, Opus whispered to himself as he ran to the top of the duck's breath ridge at dawn to watch the snow ducks soar above. Fly, he whispered as he lifted his wings and waited to be swept up beneath the fading Christmas moon with other birds. But it was on mornings such as this that Opus's heart grew as cold as his nose. A penguin can surely say the word fly, but he cannot do it. A bird with wings that won't work, Opus growled to himself. What good is that? What good am I? I might as well have been born a snail or a slice of Melba toast. One day during lunch, he climbed the statute in the park and offered to share his last pickle with the penguin pigeons but they rolled their eyebrows around and moved away. It's not our pleasure, they sniffed, to share pickles with birds whose wings do not work. If my wings will not lift me, I'll find something that does, thought Opus. He heard a man screaming on TV about a new product everyone would call Flap-O-Matic. Opus quickly ordered one. When it arrived, he put it together and hoped everything was right, since the instructions were in a different language. Opus carried it to the vulture George, strapped it on, wound up the rubber band, stepping to the edge. He looked down at the bottom three miles below. Wow, he gulped, he sighed. He walked back home and spent the rest of the day cooking anchovy Christmas cookies, which wasn't nearly as dangerous. And then Opus knew what he should do. That night he sat in front of his warm fireplace, considered his words carefully, and wrote a very important letter. Dear Santa Claus, in the past I have asked for a scarf that would last. I have wished for new skates or some herring rum cookies. But since my wings sputter, at those times they should flutter, I thought you should know I need wings that will go. After mailing his Christmas wish, Opus congratulated himself with the penguin. How could he be so clever? And he immediately went up to the duck's breath ridge to practice takeoffs. Santa Claus will be bringing me new wings, announced Opus to a passing snow duck. I shall be flying on Christmas morning. Christmas Eve soon arrived, and after leaving a note of welcome to Santa Claus in the fireplace, the penguin whose wings would not work tucked himself into bed. He burrowed deep down in his thick quilt, curled his knees up to his chin, scratched his nose one last time, and as a flock of, flock of snow ducks drifted slowly across the full Christmas moon, he closed his eyes. Fly, he whispered to himself just before falling asleep. I'll be flying on Christmas morning. And then he was snoring. Look, there, above the hills, above the clouds, a soft glow glowing brighter and closer. What was it? It was much too early for the sun. Maybe it was a duck with a flashlight. Maybe it was sleigh bells ringing? But ducks don't wear sleigh bells. Why, it was him, of course, with the thunder of hooves Father Christmas himself burst through the midnight clouds. Over the countryside, Santa's sleigh swooped 
and glided and zoomed and went. There was a bump, a little thump, probably some bumpy air, or maybe not. Something was not right. A small piece of the harness had broken away and the reindeer flew on, but Santa's sleigh plummeted like a meteor toward the lake. Hello, wake up, emergency, a voice hollered. Who's jumping on my bed? asked Rube Opus, rubbing his sleep from his eyes. A snow duck was holding a light over Opus and looking very upset. Catastrophe, calamity, the duck hollered. A considerable setback. Please, follow me. Opus sighed and guessed that the milkman had slipped and gotten his head stuck in the porch railing again. He crawled out of bed, stumbled outside his midnight, and looked at his intruder. There, said the snow ducks, and they pointed toward the dark lake. They lifted the little penguin so he could see better. Opus could make out something, a lantern out on the water, a big man with a white beard standing atop a sleigh that was teetering and rocker, rocking and sinking. Opus gasped with horror. Down the snowbank, Opus scattered a flash of black and white as he hit the water. With a roar, a shimmering curtain of spray erupted behind the rushing missile. It held in the air for the longest second, catching the moonlight before falling. Toad frogs jumped, catfish jumped, and Opus flew strong and fast through the icy water, a wonderful roaring graceful torpedo sailing through the darkness. He was swimming and swimming, after all, that's what penguins do. There, whispered a snow duck from the water's edge. Look there, he pointed, for something was moving towards them. It was Opus, and he was pulling that great Christmas sled and all the toys through the freezing water with the reins in his teeth. There was great sloshing and flop, frothing and laughing. Somebody was laughing. Out of the sleigh, a deep voice of good cheer drifted completely over the water. Ho, 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 it rumbled faintly. Ho, 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 go. Opus stumbled, exhausted, onto the dock. His arms ached and it hurt to breathe. He noticed many eyes watching him and he tried his best to straighten his soggy red bow tie. He had brought the sleigh safely to shore. The reindeer were there waiting very patiently. A large man in a red suit approached, grasped his hand, and shook it gently. Santa's white pink face came down close to his, and his whiskers brushed Opus's ear. Opus noticed his kind eyes, which of, one of which winked softly. I see no penguins here, Santa whispered, whose wings only sputter. Tonight it was courage that flew yours beyond others. He whirled and with a snap of a whip and a hearty laugh, he and the sleigh sailed up toward the stars. Opus awoke Christmas morning and stumbled sleepily to the door, but he found something beside the morning paper outside. He rubbed his eyes in disbelief. There in his porch and spreading out across his lawn and down the street were hundreds, maybe even thousands of smiling snow ducks, and each and every one wore a bright red bow tie. Two of the ducks took hold of his arms and led him outside, where slowly at first and then faster, they all began running and flapping their wings. What's going on, said Opus, but he already knew, for his feet weren't on the ground anymore. Over the street, above the houses, those ducks carried Opus until they were way, way above Duck Breath Ridge. Down below, people looked up, and they could hear a voice somewhere above the clouds. It was a penguin whose wings didn't work, laughing because he surely was flying on Christmas morning.